uh, to, 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 to date your family. And then E, we've got to encourage our kids. Encourage our kids. You know, life can be discouraging. And it's a parent's job to bring hope and courage and confidence in them, to bring life into them and, 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 and hope into their life. It's so important. Hebrews 10, 24 is powerful. It says this, think of ways to encourage one another, to oust verse of love and good deeds. How do we encourage our kids? Maybe a hug, maybe a high five, maybe a hooray, a thumbs up, and breathe that life into them. This week, I got to spend about two hours with uh, one of our, our leaders in the Royal Rangers ministry in South Texas. His name is Ralph Williams. He was our district commander for about 14 years. And he told me a little bit of his life. He's 87 years old now. But when he was just a boy, he was an unwanted child. Literally, he was forced to sit down to be worked all the way across the state of Texas. When he was 12, his parents, his, his mother and his stepdad didn't call him, didn't speak to him, didn't write him a letter. He hitchhiked from Lampasas, Texas at 12 years of age all the way back to Henderson, Texas. And he walked him to the trailer house. They were eating dinner. They didn't offer him any food. They just said, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be out on the farm working. And he had to actually work to pay his way. And, and, and the interesting thing about this man, who, who's so tender at 87, I just pray, Lord, put that spirit that's in Ralph Williams in me. The most amazing part of that story was that there was a pastor. The church was five miles away. He never missed a service, had to walk all the way, all those five miles there and back. But you know why he went? Because that pastor and some of the men of the church every every week, especially the pastor, would put his arm around him and he would say, Jesus loves you and I do too. Amen. And while I was there, one of the boys, and let me tell you, that guy's been involved in Royal Rangers for 49 years. One of his boys came up to him and he put his arm around him and he says, I love you. And who else loves you? And the boy said, Jesus loves you. He's done that so many times the kid knew it. I'm here today to tell you that everybody needs an encouragement. Everybody needs a hug. Come on. Give the Lord a hand of praise today. It's hard to be encouraging when you're discouraged with their behavior. Let's get back to reality, right? When your child's angry, remember this. A gentle answer will calm a person's anger, but an unkind answer will cause more anger. Proverbs 15, 1. When you're frustrated with your child's behavior, here's a verse for you. Losing your temper causes a lot of trouble. Proverbs 15, 18. When their room is not picked up, remember this. Careless words stab like a sword. But the words of wise people bring healing. Proverbs 12, 8. When your child has failed, remember Proverbs 15, 4. Remember that kind words are good medicine. Here's what I'm saying. Everybody needs encouragement. And then the last letter, and I'm going to close with this, is that we've got to learn from difficulty. Dr. Gary Smalley, who's ever heard of him? He's one of our leaders in the family uh, movement, the Christian family movement. He's an author, an awesome author. I encourage you to buy his books. But in one of his books, he had done a study, and he had decided, and wrote in this book, how that some of the most healthy families in the world went camping. Is there anybody who likes camping? Okay, I've got a few people who like camping. All right. My wife was over there shaking her head. Huh? Uh, and this is what they learned about camping. How many know camping trips never go like you planned them? <laughs> Judah, Holly's husband, and I went camping this week up in Missouri. And let me tell you, I struggled along with everything in my tent, including my cot and my sleeping bag, getting wet from the rain, having to sleep instead of on a cot on the ground one night. But you know the most amazing part of it was the Lord gave me lumbar support. Eh? I'm just telling there was a bump just right there that fit right in the small of my back. And let me tell you, as, as I was thinking about, I got to think about when I was a kid that my family went camping and we were we were actually in Missouri in Roaring River State Park, right out by Camp Eagle Rock. And we had a horrible storm and my sister was sick. And she said this to our family. She said, you call this fun. That's what she said. And so that's kind of been a thing in our family. We said, you call this fun? You have to be a Millsap to understand that, all right? And you only think my family gets that. But, but the truth is that families that go camping learn how to overcome obstacles. 
And I'm going to tell you something. You're going to have some obstacles in your life. Some difficulties going to come. And you know, some parents want to shield their kids from everything. They don't want their kids to, let me tell you, it's okay to let your kids know, hey, guess what? The car broke down and uh, I had to pay $1,800 for a new transmission. No, you are not going to the movies tonight. I'm so sorry about that, but there's no money left for you. To, how many of you think it's okay? You know what you're teaching? is teaching your kids we're going to overcome the obstacles in our life. We're going to experience difficulties and setbacks and heartaches and difficulties. But let me tell you something. Teach your kids this. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. All the stuff of the world, all the little difficulties, all the little stuff around you doesn't really matter. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's the one that'll get you through. Come on. He's the one that matters. He, if you have a relationship with him, you've got everything. Amen. Amen. Let me read you this last verse out of the book of James. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, is there anybody ever had any trouble in your life? Amen. Yeah. When trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. Yeah. Boy, I did not need that verse. <laughs> when I walked in there and saw my cock with three inches of water in it, all right? But I did need it, actually. I did. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be strong in character and ready for anything. Would you stand with me today? Thank you so much for listening to this message today. I hope it's encouraged you. I hope it's... Uh...